guys let me start off today's video by saying happy Halloween if you have made it to this video you've made it to the crescendo of rolling with t-bone presents spooktober and let me start off by saying this if you are returning in the middle of returning or have returned from the forgotten angels camp out this past weekend have safe travels and hope you had a great time <sighs> blue moon and there was no other bike to bring this to the end had to be blue moon it just had to be blue moon and I asked in another video if you bought a saddleman seat for your Dyna I've got the other 99 Dyna I would love to have a stock seat like this one to go on that bike so if you have one laying around and you're not wanting to use it and you would like to donate it to a T-Bone let me know you know you'd think with two Dynas I'd get used to reaching behind my leg to turn the key switch on but let's dive into it Hey guys, welcome to the last episode of Rolling with T-Bone Percent Spooktober. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys for helping to make this a huge success. Let's get into it, shall we? I tell you guys, sometimes I just forget that Blue Moon hits a lot different than the other bikes I have. <laughs> Blue Moon is a beast. If you're new here, welcome in guys. My name is T-Bone. You have came in after a crescendo of a series I called Rolling with T-Bone Presents Spooktober. If you have not went and watched those other episodes leading up to this one, I invite you to go do so. As I have been talking about just some of my favorite Halloween spooky movies that I love. And today, guys, is Halloween. Today, well, tomorrow's Halloween. But today is the crescendo. Now, this whole time I've been talking about one movie creator. And I'm going to do three of his movies. Has anybody guessed who the day belongs to yet? Well, the day belongs to none other than Stephen King. Uh, Stephen King... Guys, we just can't deny it. Stephen King for Gen Z. He was our whole childhood, adolescence, adulthood. Stephen King has just been in our generation forever. There has never been time where there wasn't no Stephen King. Uh, and man, guys, I'm going to tell you, the list of movies that I could have chosen for this particular series... Uh, it is long and vast. Of course, Stephen King uh, has one of those guys who just knows how to tell a crazy story. <laughs> Most of his movies take place in Maine, in the state of Maine, because that's where Stephen King comes from. So today's first movie, and I can't really ramble too much about these movie guys because I am on a time crunch, because I'm putting all three of his movies in this one video today. But the first video I'm going to talk to you about that uh, Stephen King made that I absolutely love was 1985's Silver Bullet. Now, I know there's a lot of Gen Xers know Silver Bullet. And, of course, Silver Bullet was uh, featured a young man named Corey Hames. Uh, rest in peace, Corey. He's no longer with us. And uh, had Gary Busey in it. Now, the... The 80s were a werewolf time because you had Michael J. Fox who did the movie Team Wolf. You had a lot of other werewolf material going on. Warren Zevin was singing the, the song Werewolves of London. You had Wolves on the Brain. Now, Silver Bullet came out in 1985, and it is actually considered to be one of the greatest werewolf movies ever made. Uh, of course, you know, there is talk about how the werewolf did not look like a werewolf in that movie. It looked more like a bear. But, hey, it was 1985. So, Corey Hames' character uh, is in a wheelchair. 
and Gary Busey plays his uncle, Crazy Uncle Red, which it wasn't a stretch for Gary Busey to play a crazy guy. But uh, Silver Bullet basically comes down to uh, Red builds the kid a souped up hot rod, go, uh, you know, wheelchair. And people are being attacked in the town. Uh, they want to say it's a bear attack or whatever. But Corey Hames is the one who actually decides that it may not be a bear, but in fact a werewolf. And then one night, uh, it happens on Halloween night that he's out on this bridge shooting fireworks and the werewolf shows up to attack him. He ends up shooting the werewolf in the eye with a bottle rocket and putting its eye out. And in doing that, you set up the plot of the movie, which is that the werewolf will chase him, try to catch him, try to kill him. But they have to find out who the werewolf is. So he brings his sister Jan in on the idea, and she's just not too sure that there is a werewolf, but she don't want to say that her little brother has completely gone eggnog crazy. So she tries to help him out, and they find out ultimately that the town preacher is the werewolf and they go you know on this wild adventure with crazy uncle red who finally starts believing the kids that there's a werewolf sort of he believes them enough that he goes and he has a silver bullet made out of uh, silver jewelry that the kids had donated to red to have this one special bullet made uh, Overall guys, the movie is just a great movie because it tells a great story. It tells a story, it, it tells about life and hard times in life. Meaning everyone has their own handicaps. It's not just Corey Hames' character who's in a wheelchair. Uncle Red is an alcoholic. The mom is controlling and possessive and don't want to let him grow up. Uh, Busey, like I said, he plays the alcoholic character. The sister plays kind of the, uh, I'm tired of being around my little brother. I'm tired of his handicap affecting my life character. So it sets the, it sets the movie up good to tell a great story. Now, this originally came from the Stephen King uh, novel called The Cycle of the Werewolf. Or, so, yeah, The Cycle of the Werewolf. Uh, it was based on a calendar series, and over the 12 months of the lunar cycles, he, they told a different story, and it turned out to be a novel, uh, a little short novel that came out, well, 127 pages, so it wasn't real short. But Stephen King ended up having to write the script for Silver Bullet because uh, Everyone had their own ideals and nobody had the right ideal. Nobody could get it. And in the beginning, in 83, when Stephen King sold the rights to do it, he was busy. He said, I can't be involved in it. By 84, uh, they was able to get him in. He had wrote some notes for the other two who were going to be writing it and directing it. And finally, Stephen King just had to come in and do it himself. So it goes back to that old saying, if you want something done right, you just got to do it yourself. So, you know, that's it, guys. 1985 Silver Bullet. And like I said, I can't spend a whole lot of time monologuing about these movies. Silver Bullet is a great movie. It deserves a watch. Uh, and it tells actually tells a great story, guys. It really does. There's a great story in the movie Silver Bullet. And, of course, uh, you know, Corey Hames will go on with Corey Feldman to be the two Coreys, be famous. Uh, Corey Hames, of course, did a lot of great movies that we all know and love, like, uh, you know, The Lost Boys, uh, License to Drive, just a lot of big projects. And uh, he left his mark on the world. All right, so that takes care of Silver Bullet. And I hope if you have seen Silver Bullet, Maybe this will kind of make you want to go back tonight for Halloween. Maybe and rewatch it if you can find it being streamed somewhere. Or if you haven't, go back and rewatch it if it's been a while. Uh, movie number two. Movie number two, guys, is going to be 1989's Pet Cemetery. 
Ah yes, Pet Cemetery. Such a beautiful love story of a guy who, you know, kills a cat, puts it in a graveyard, brings it back to life. His kid gets killed, he puts him in a cemetery, brings it back to life, evil. His wife dies, so he puts her in the cemetery really quick and brings her back, evil. But Pet Cemetery, guys, 1989, Pet Cemetery is gonna, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> even being a Stephen King movie, Pet Cemetery has its own cult following in that if you've never watched a Stephen King movie, as soon as somebody says the name Pet Cemetery, they automatically know what you're talking about. They remember this movie. 1989, Pet Cemetery come out. Uh, and at the time, it had one of my favorite actors in it, Mr. Fred Gwynn. And of course, uh, the older people remember Fred, Mr. Fred Gwynn uh, playing Herman Munster in the TV series, The Munsters. And before that, he was also in the long-running TV series, Car 54, Where Are You? Fred Gwynn is just an, uh, an amazing actor. He was in My Cousin Vinny. He played uh, the judge in the movie with Joe Pesci and Marissa Tomei in it and Ralph Macchio called My Cousin Vinny. Another great 90s movie. Uh, Fred Gwynn was uh, just a big, lovable guy who loved making people happy. So, we enter him into the story of Pet Cemetery. Now, what happens in Pet Cemetery is the horror of the movie actually starts out being about the road that runs between these two homes. The one being Fred Quinn's home and the other one being the doc, his wife, and two kids. Now, they have a daughter, they have a son. Uh, over the course of the movie, Frank Wynn starts telling them about Pet Cemetery, about people burying their pets over there, because the road is so dangerous because of the truckers. Uh, they don't slow down, they don't drive on that road easy, they drive that road wide open, and they end up killing pets, and as the movie progresses a little bit, they end up killing the little boy, uh, the doctor's son, and, uh, very, very scary situation, very sad ending for the little boy. But now, before he gets killed, the doctor sits down with Fred Gwynn's character, Gwynn's, char Gwynn's character and talks to him about burying things in the pet cemetery. And of course, he tells him a story about a pet of his, a dog that he had buried into the cemetery and it had came back evil. Uh, and of course he had to put it down again basically turning it into a demonic zombie like animal and uh, the doc asked him he says well has anyone ever buried a human which really shocks Fred Gwynn he spills his beer and he says Christ on the cross no why would anybody even think of doing something like that now we go on to the little boy getting run over in the road by the trucker who was listening to the radio, running wide open, not paying attention to the road, and hits the little boy and kills him. And, uh, of course, Dad takes him to the cemetery, buries him, and the little boy does come back evil. Uh, the dad, being a doctor, has to come up with a serum that he can inject into his now evil son to put him down uh, but before he can do that the wife returns they end up with this whole schmoz going on anyway it ends up with the doctor's wife being buried immediately as soon as she dies in the pet cemetery and of course the doc thinks if she comes back she won't be evil he's trying to do all this deductive reasoning in his head about why the ground there makes things come back evil but I'll leave the end of the movie for you to watch if you've never saw Pet Cemetery. If you've never saw Pet Cemetery, I really feel sorry for the life you live. Because that's just a great movie whether you're a horror fan or just a Stephen King thriller fan. Pet Cemetery is the standard by... It's just as important as uh, The Shining. 
it's just as important as it uh, as the stand it's just as important as any movie Stephen King has made uh, you know when the, uh, the story behind Pet Cemetery if you're going to dig deeper and try to find what the story is about it's about a dad who loves his family but has a lot going on and he realizes as his family dies that he needs his family uh, and of course in the movie the little girl the daughter she has premonitions kind of what's going to happen uh, but I tell you what, guys, if you haven't watched Pet Cemetery or you haven't watched it in a while, uh, go back and give it a give it a go, give it a shot, give it a chance. Spend a little time watching it and checking it out, and see if uh, see if you don't kind of draw the same conclusions that everybody else over the years have drawn. Is that and that is that Pet Cemetery is just a great movie. But uh, you know, again, it's uh, you can watch any Stephen King movie that you want to. And you can kind of draw from, is Stephen King crazy? Or can he just tell a good story? That is left totally up to the person who is watching the movie, in fact. Uh, I could have went on the other way, I guess. But anyway, so 1985, we had Silver Bullet. 1989, we had Pet Cemetery. Now, we're going to fast forward into the 90s just a little bit. With a movie I had kind of let slip below my radar, but I actually loved the movie when it came out in the 90s, and I've watched it several times. And I am talking about 1996's movie, Thinner. T-H-I-N-N-E-R. Thinner takes place, uh, a lawyer, an attorney who actually is obese, uh, ends up throwing a case along with the help of the judge and uh, the town sheriff. They throw a case and the case that they throw is for a mobster. Uh, and they get him off and as a celebration they have, the company has a uh, dinner. And of course, uh, Billy, who is the main character, his wife tries to get him to slow down eating, that he's obsessed with food. And uh, they leave the party early, and on her, their way home, they're having a conversation, and she decides she's going to remind Billy of why he should start worrying about his health and keeping himself up. Uh, that thing that happens inside of a car sometimes when a man's up in the front seat driving and a woman's in the passenger seat use your imagination or better yet go watch thinner and see for yourself what happens but nonetheless it ends up with him running over a old gypsy woman uh he hits her with his car and kills her uh, then you go into the trial and Heidi, Billy's wife, says it's not his fault. Uh, their daughter don't understand what's going on. She's very confused about everything. Either way, evidence gets moved around. Things happen and Billy gets away with running over the old gypsy woman and killing her. So at the end of the trial, the old gypsy woman's dad shows up and he puts a what I guess we would call a curse or a hex on Billy. So the hex that he does is he walks up and he touches Billy's face and he says the word thinner. Now Billy don't really understand what the, the old gypsy man has done to him. But over the course of the movie Billy starts losing weight. The more weight the more he eats, actually the more weight he loses. Uh, and eventually Billy finds out that the judge had had a curse put on him and also that the sheriff had had a curse put on him by the old man. I think the judge, he touched him on the chest and he turned him into uh, kind of like a uh, lizard man. And the third guy, the sheriff, he actually causes boils and sores to rise up all over his body to the point where he shoots himself. 
and the other guy gets killed in a car wreck. So Billy has kind of put two and two together and kind of has realized that he might be in trouble. Or, in fact, the old gypsy might have actually put a curse on him. <coughs> so, Billy goes and tracks down the gypsies and he tries to reason with the old man about look I, I realize what I did it wrong I'm very sorry I will make amends for it but please take this curse off of me uh, by this time Billy is just pretty well much skin and bones uh, the old man denies it and the daughter ends up the great granddaughter who was played by a girl named uh, Carol World, I think was her name. Future T-Bone, find that girl's name and put it right here. But anyway, she ends up shooting Billy through the hand with her slingshot. She shoots a metal ball bearing through the center of Billy's hand, leaving this big massive hole. Billy runs off. So Billy goes to his gangster buddy that he got off uh, for murder in the beginning of the movie and you know just at a very short time Billy says hey you owe me so they end up attacking the gypsy camp killing someone basically forcing the old man to have a meeting with Billy at a lighthouse they kidnap the great granddaughter and she takes the message back of they're going to kill all the gypsies if they don't lift the curse off of Billy so the old man comes to Billy with a pie it's a cherry pie the old man cuts Billy's hand along with his blood puts it into the pie and he tells Billy that he has to get someone to eat the pie and they will ingest the curse and Billy will no longer have the curse on him but the old, the old gypsy man tries to implore boy, Billy to just be a man and eat the pie himself. But Billy's defiant at this point. But he also has a problem with thinking that his wife and his doctor are having an affair. Which will later on be proved to be true. So Billy gets it in his mind that he's going to have his wife to eat the pie. And he does. She wakes up the next morning dead. Just a corpse in the bed beside Billy. And uh, Billy is feeling pretty good about that. So he's heading downstairs, going to grab some breakfast. But he finds out his daughter, whom he had sent away to stay with a friend while he did what he was doing to his wife, had returned home. And he saw a plate in the sink showing that she had eaten a, eaten a piece of the pie when she came home for breakfast. So Billy's all sad now. He knows that his daughter, not only has he brought a death sentence to his wife, he has brought a death sentence to his daughter as well. He's just about to take a bite of the pie when the doorbell rings and the doctor is standing there but he doesn't expect to see Billy because he thinks Billy is in a sanitarium. But Billy then invites the doctor in to join him in a piece of pie. And there's where the movie ends. It's left to your uh, own imagination as to whether Billy just fed the doc the pie or if Billy did also eat a piece of the pie essentially killing everybody. But Thinner, guys, 1996, Thinner was one of those movies. Uh, I enjoyed it when it very first came out. I uh, thought it was a good story, thought it was a good movie. Uh, and for a long time after it came out, I didn't put two and two together that it was actually a Stephen King movie until later on. So there it is, guys. We have come to the end of Rolling with T-Bone Presents Spooktober. And guys, I gotta tell you, you have made this series very successful. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I've had a lot of great views, a lot of great feedback. Uh, I have really enjoyed doing this series. Uh, 
and like I said last year I would have done a Halloween series but I was going through we were going through all the health stuff with our one so really I just didn't have time to commit to getting it done uh, but I tell you guys this has been a fun series to shoot and uh, I would like for y'all to go back and watch uh, some of the movies that I suggest in this series you know we started it out at the beginning of October and man this month has flown, flown by because here we are uh, thank you guys though for making this series very special now if you remember back at the beginning of this which seemed like such a long time ago now I had said after I shot this series that I would be taking my vacation from shooting content I'll still be around in the live chats but this is the time that I start reflecting on rolling with T-Bone as a whole I take a mental break from the from just the pressure of having to shoot content and I take a little mental break for myself and just enjoy fall riding in the winter because we get into winter and uh, like I said I also take the time during this to kind of decide what direction I'm going to go to next uh, because I am honestly constantly trying to make sure this thing evolves a little I don't want it to change from the original concept which is what this is is moto vlogging but I would like to uh, evolve it I have grown this year uh, we have grown the channel this year all my new subscribers that have subscribed this year thank you for your support uh, I've met a lot of good friends doing this and also this year I started doing live premieres and I had never done that up till this year I'd always just loaded my videos on Monday and went on with my business but uh thank you guys I, you you really you really have made this enjoyable and you've given me the, the the desire to want to keep on doing it keep on going and keep on trying to grow it because I don't have a patreon I don't get paid for this this is just me doing something that I love and doing something that I enjoy doing and when you have good feedback kind of like you guys have given me while I've been doing this that means a lot so uh, you know this little vacation that I'm going to take is not a permanent vacation I'm not sure how long I'll take I'll probably do some stuff here and there but for the most part I'm going to rest my mind a little bit and really enjoy your guys' content this is also the time, time that I start enjoying going through your content and watching your videos and if I missed anything during all this hectic time I could go back and re-watch it uh, I'm looking forward to the all the forgotten angels videos that will come out from this past weekend's uh, October camp out I, it was Wren themed uh, so I'm looking forward to all the videos that are to come and you guys will hear from me before the major holidays uh, you should but guys I'll tell you what rolling with T-Bone presents Spooktober is in the bag guys uh, the challenge comes to an end tomorrow night T-Bone challenge record yourself reacting to a scary movie put it on your channel and I'll come and check it out but guys thank you for being here happy Halloween and it means a lot to be in R1 that you guys are continuing to show this support for us so for myself R1 and the entire Rolling with T-Bone family thank you just thank you for everything that you've done this past year guys happy halloween to remember to like share comment subscribe new here go check out old videos old here go back check out old videos and remember why you like rolling with t-bone and remember why you joined the family so guys until the next time y'all take care of yourselves take care of each other and thank you for watching